Welcome to the Prophetic Portal with Hector Santos, where the focus is on dreams, visions, prophecy, angels, and all things supernatural. The kingdom of Jesus Christ is the true portal to the spiritual realm. This podcast is brought to you by GeForce Ministries. All right, welcome to the Prophetic Portal. This is your brother in Christ, Hector Santos. I'm so glad you joined with me today. So what is a prophetic portal? And why exactly did we name the podcast Prophetic Portal? Of all things that we could have named a podcast, why Prophetic Portal? What is that? You know, I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked the question. Because today I want to talk to you about uh, what a portal actually is and what the prophetic actually is. And we're going to give you a definition. I understand that sometimes we start jumping into certain conversations and uh, in Christendom, we have a tendency of naming things and calling things certain things. And just people adapt to knowing, hearing a word, but not really understanding and having the revelation of what a word means. So Today, I thought it'd be great to continue the conversation by explaining and giving a background and a definition to what a prophetic portal is. Because listen, when when we started this podcast, I wasn't looking to start a podcast just to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you about the weather. I'm not looking to talk to you about sports. I'm not looking to talk to you about culinary arts or any of those things. And, you know, there are many people out there dedicating their podcasts to those subjects. And, and, you know, and praise God, that's important. It's important to have a little bit of everything. It's important to have information and be able to get resource for different areas of your life. That's great. That's, you know, that's all part of God's goodness to us. I myself, you know, I'll get on YouTube and I'll research fitness and health and so on and so forth. And thank God for the channels uh, that are available to me. Uh, but that's not why I'm here. Uh, one of the reasons why... I'm even in ministry. One of the reasons why I'm here talking to you today and recording this podcast is because I have an assignment on my life. I believe that God has called me into ministry to clarify and to demystify the spiritual realm. That's right, to demystify it, to to not make it so mystical, to to not make it so weird and and uh, otherworldly, but rather for believers and Christians, for us to understand that we were created by God to be supernatural and to understand supernatural things. Now, if you're hearing that for the first time and that makes you a little concerned or worried, I have to tell you right now, that's probably for a number of reasons. Maybe you weren't taught on the supernatural. Maybe you're a Christian, but you went to one of those churches that teach that the supernatural is not for today. There's no healing today. God doesn't speak directly to people today. You know, there are people out there trumpeting that kind of a message, but I have to say that that is completely wrong and anti-scriptural. Uh, so uh, if you've been a product of that kind of environment, of course, of course, you're going to hear someone like me talking about the supernatural realm. And you're going to think, what is this guy selling? What kind of snake oil is he trying to get me to buy? Well, listen, I'm not trying to get you to buy anything. I'm not trying to convince you of anything. I, As I said in the first podcast, I'm a believer. I gave my life to Jesus Christ. And what that means is I take my walk with Christ seriously, as we all should, right? And also, I take the Word of God seriously. The, the, the Bible is not a book on my shelf. It's not a suggestion. It's the Word of God. It's the love note, the God's love letter to me. It's the story of redemption, of Hector's redemption, of your redemption, the redemption, the redemption of mankind. It's, it's, it's my map, right? It's my guide. It's our guide on the earth on how to navigate this earth from God's perspective, knowing what God is intending to do in our lives and knowing that he's got an assignment for us and that we should do things his way so that we could succeed, right? That is my understanding of a relationship with Christ and being a believer. So if you agree with me, and I'm you know, i sure that what I said was elemental Christianity, I'm sure everybody's agreeing with, with that definition. It, you know, God 
created us. He's given us a purpose and a destiny, and he wants us to know it, and he wants us to uh, connect with him and walk that out successfully. Then I'm sure we can all agree on that. But it's after that that we'd start going into different branches of Christianity. There's different beliefs and, and, and teachings and so on and so forth, where I just see over and over in the Word of God that God didn't just put me on this planet and say, uh, uh, you know, you're going to read about me, but there's no way for you to know me personally. I just, I don't believe that. I, there's way too much scripture to teach against that. Not to mention, uh, ever since I was a kid, even before I understood scripture, and even before I understood that there were different arguments on the subject, I grew up in an atmosphere where we were just taught with childlike faith that God is our heavenly father, and which child would not have a personal relationship with their parent? Explain that to me. So um, that's just how I grew up. It actually took me years of me uh, being ignorant to the other factions uh, of not even knowing that there were other stances on this on this argument. It took me years. It was an, when I was an adult that I came across the knowledge that there are Christians out there that believe that they can't know God personally. I mean, say what? I mean, w- hold on a second. I don't know. Well, I I do have some ideas of where that came from. I'm not going to go into that today, but I'll tell you what, you know, get away from me with that because um, Jesus Christ is my personal savior. And I know him from reading about him in the word, but I know him person. I have a personal relationship with him and my heavenly father. And because I know my heavenly father, and because I, I speak to him, he speaks to me. Jesus said in John 10, 27, John 10, 27, listen to it for yourself. Go read it yourself. My sheep know my voice. My sheep know my voice and I know them and they follow me. Now, why in the world would Jesus say that his, those that belong to him would follow him if there's not a way for us to know how he's guiding us. So he's given us guidance and he does speak to us because he's saying, my sheep hear my voice. And yes, God speaks through his word, but God speaks in so many different ways. There's just way too many ways to go into it today. But over the um, upcoming uh, episodes that we'll have, we'll go into different ways that God speaks, but God's a communicator. God loves to communicate to his children. I have two girls and, and I have a wonderful relationship with them. And it's a delight for me to sit down and be able to, uh, you know, have lunch with them and, you know, catch up with them. Honey, how was your day today? What's going on? What are you doing next week? We talk about important plans for life, but guess what? We talk about silly stuff. We talk about all kinds of things. It's called relationship. What makes us think that, you know, as Earthly parents, you know, we're such good parents. You know, we love on our kids. We dote on our kids. We uh, we just love on them and appreciate them and communicate with them. And and yet, someone somewhere somehow came up with the notion that God doesn't do that for us. I, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. That's that's so wrong. So listen, what is a prophetic portal? Prophetic. Let me give you a definition. The the, the word prophetic from a Christian worldview, basically comes from that verse that I read to you on, uh, on from John 10, 27, where Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. The prophetic is when we hear the voice of God. Something prophetic is something that we can hear and discern when God Almighty has anointed something or some incident in our lives to speak through that to us. That is prophetic. It's like when, uh, you know, I, I read the Bible like every other believer and every other Christian, and right, we should, but sometimes I'm reading it for historical purposes. I love studying the history of the things that went on, King David and all those different things. But there are times when I'm reading the Word of God where all of a sudden, as I'm reading the Word of God, I feel God is speaking to me. It's not just text on on a page, but this text is manifesting. It's speaking a now word to me. And you know, the the now word, the, the Greek word for that now word, it's a rhema. It's a living word. It's a now word. I'm having a, a rhema word from God. I feel like whatever I'm reading in that moment comes alive and God is speaking to my life for today. And it could be about King David. It could be about anything, but, and it doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes as I'm reading, it'll feel like all of a sudden that what I'm reading just boom comes alive and it starts ministering 
word, uh, words to me. I remember as a new believer, when I found the scripture that said, God is an ever so present help in times of trouble. Hmm? God is our refuge in times of trouble an ever so present help in times of need. That's how the verse says, an ever so present time uh, help in times of need. I was, I found that verse as a new believer and and I remember meditating on that and thinking, man, that's that's really cool. And what really jumped out at me as I was reading it was the words ever so. He wasn't just a, a help in times of need. He was an ever so present help in times of need. Like the emphasis was there. Like, don't doubt this. Don't even second guess it. When you're in times of need, guess what? As real as the air that you breathe, Father God is there as an ever so present help to help you with whatever you need. And I remember I read that and that jumped out. That was a rhema word. That was prophetic God was using that scripture to speak to me. And you know, it's funny, I didn't know in a few weeks after that, I was going to need to draw from the revelation that I received on that day from that verse. I had had a job, one of my first jobs after college, I worked in a Christian radio station. Yeah, I did. (laughs) And uh, I had the morning shift. I had to get there super early. I remember the radio station, we had to get our programming, everything up and running and be on air by 5 a.m. sharp with the morning programming. We'll get this. I get to one morning I wake up and I'm uh, heading out to work and my heart kind of sank because it was, it was, you know, here in Rochester, New York, you know, we, we get the bad winter weather and it was one of those mornings. It was very wintry, a very wintry mix but I got in my car and I drove to work very ever so carefully, a lot of ice, a lot of snow. And being out that early in the morning, there weren't a lot of plows, so I had to drive super carefully. But when I got to the building where I work uh, at my job, my heart sank again when I pulled into the parking lot because I noticed there was a sheet of ice at the front door. And when I saw that, I thought, oh, oh, this is going to be tough. So I get out, out of my car, walk up to the front door, and I put the key in and I, there was nowhere to put the key. It's like the keyhole was covered in ice. Oh man, you better believe I tried everything I could try. I, I was blowing hot air on the, on that, uh, on that device, on the door. I was trying to put my hand on there, hoping that that the heat from my hand would melt the ice off of the keyhole. I tried everything. And listen, that thick slab of ice was not melting. Time was ticking and I had to get in there because I have to have, no matter what goes on, the show must go on, right? I have to, you know, we have advertisers, we have programs. I had to get in there and get this radio station, our programming up and running for 5 a.m. sharp. So there I was in a mess and I'm telling you, it was early. I didn't want to call my boss. You know, it was just one of the, I'm in one of those moments and just like that, just like that, I remembered that verse rose up from my heart. God is an help in times of need, an ever so present help in times of trouble. And ever so, and I remember the verse highlighted ever so present. Well, then you know what I did? I did what I needed to do in that dark parking lot, in the, in the cold, in the snow, with a slab of ice over that front door. I bowed my head down and I said, God, your word tells me that you're an ever so present help. So I know you're here with me and guess what? I'm in trouble. I need your ever so present help. Lord, help me get into this door. I've got to get the radio station. I got to turn everything on and get the programming on by 5 a.m. I need your help now. I ask you humbly in the name of Jesus and I thank you. Amen. And I remember I took that key. Nothing in the natural seemed to change. But when I put that key in that keyhole, listen, I'm telling you, I wish I had a camera crew with me. I wish I had, uh, you know, Fox News or CNN with me recording this because it was like supernaturally that key slid right into that keyhole and bam. That's right. It went right in and I was able to click, turn the key and the door opened. I am telling you, I lie not. I was the only one that morning in that parking lot 
in the natural. I believe there were angels in that parking lot with me. But I'm telling you, I had a revival that morning because that not only did that scripture speak a rhema word to me, and I got revelation from that word, but it was prophetic. God gave me that scripture because he knew in a few weeks I was going to need his help. And he gave me that word, which brought me what I needed that morning. Wow, that is the power of the prophetic. The prophetic is hearing the voice of God. See, we need to learn how to hear the voice of God because when God speaks to you, he always releases a strategy. He gives you something that you need so that you can get a breakthrough. Hallelujah. That's why the prophetic is so important. That's why Satan fights the prophetic. That's why Satan hates the prophetic. He hates it. Darkness hates the prophetic because if you move forward, you step all over him and you damage his kingdom. Mm, how about that? Well, the prophetic is defined hearing the voice of God. So now let's define what a portal is. A portal is a doorway, a gateway, okay? So if we put that together, the prophetic portal, I call this prophetic portal because this is a gateway. I want to talk to you about every believer is a portal. See, you're a gateway to heaven. The Bible says very clearly, let me, let me pull this verse up for you, that uh, it says in Colossians 1.13 that when we were saved, the Bible says he delivered us from the domain of darkness. You used to belong to the kingdom of darkness. You were delivered from the domain of darkness and you were transferred into the kingdom of his beloved son. You used to belong to darkness. That used to be your neighborhood, but God showed up with a U-Haul truck, packed you up, grabbed all your stuff and said, we're moving. And he moved you across town to the kingdom of heaven. See, in the spirit realm, there are two kingdoms at war. There's the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of God. And before we were submitted and, and surrendered to Jesus Christ, we lived in, a dar in darkness, in the kingdom of darkness. I don't care how good you were. I don't care how nice you were. I don't care how many donations you gave at Christmas. I don't care. It doesn't matter. If Jesus was not in your life, you belonged to the kingdom of darkness. And in the kingdom of darkness, you could not hear the voice of God. You were blinded to what God was doing in your life. But somehow, someway, God reached you in his goodness. You got saved and it, immediately your spirit man became alive. And because your spirit man that was dead now came alive, you were translated. God moved you out of darkness into the kingdom of his son, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, Jesus Christ, the king who talks to his children. So now your spirit is alive with the ability to hear from God, the ability, because Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. Now you are one of Jesus's sheep. And now you can hear his voice. And by hearing his voice, he knows you and you follow the leading of Jesus. Praise God. Isn't that exciting? So now you're, you're made prophetic. You're made alive. You can hear the voice of God. You have the ability to not only hear from God, but you also have the ability that in time, as you grow in your ability to hear from God, now you also have the ability to communicate to others what God is saying. Now you can become a doorway, a gateway where the voice of God can come forth out of your life and minister to everyone in darkness and bring them in to the kingdom of the sun. That's why we call this podcast, The Prophetic Portal. Who is a prophetic portal? You are. You, those of you who are believers, who are blood-bought, those of you who are children of Jesus, you, you've given your life over to Jesus Christ, you are a portal of heaven. Now, whether you know that or not, that's a different story, and we'll be going into that. But the fact of the matter is, sometimes you don't even know who you are. You don't even know that you were called by God, not just to be a Christian. God just didn't want to save you from hell. Ha, no, that's that's a benefit of being a Christian, that you, we don't go to hell when we die. That's awesome. We go to heaven. That's great. But you've got work to do here on the earth. And while you're here on the earth, God has so much for you to do. And in order for you to be successful at what he's called you to do, you need to know how to hear his voice, which is why Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. I know them and they follow me. You can't be successful if you don't know how to follow him. Even, even when Jesus was alive and they went to the wedding, his mother said to the guys, listen, his mother said, whatever he says to do, do it. 
The success of the believer is whatever Jesus tells you to do, you need to do it. And when you obey God, when you hear the voice of God and you obey what he tells you to do, you will succeed at whatever God tells you to do. I don't care the demons. I don't care the backlash. I don't care anything that uh, the discouragement that the enemy throws at you. If you do everything that God tells you to do and obey him, you will succeed. A prophetic portal is a gateway where heaven begins to flow outward and invade darkness, invade earth, and begin to bring in souls into the kingdom of heaven. I'm a prophetic portal. I'm hoping that I can help you understand that you're a prophetic portal. And when we look across the face of the earth, what will find is an army of Christian believers who are all prophetic portals. And if we understand how this works in our lives, we can begin to release the voice of God and begin to shine the light of Christ in darkness. And then we can see the kingdom of heaven begin to expand across the face of of the world. We're going to be talking on this podcast. I'm going to talk to you about how to hear, how to increase your hearing so that you get better at hearing from God, how to develop an accuracy so you know when God is speaking, when he's not speaking, when it's the enemy trying to confuse you and speak to you, or when it's even your own thoughts. We need to know these things so that we could be strong prophetic portals on the earth today. I've made it my goal. I've made it my lifestyle that I want God to speak to me and through me. So if you sit in there and you're hearing this, maybe you're hearing it for the first time. (laughs) I'm sure there are people hearing it for the first time saying, uh, what? I've never heard this before. Or maybe you're thinking that can't happen. God doesn't work that way. Well, you know what? Don't tell me that. I'm glad I didn't hear that. I'm glad no one told me that. You know, no one didn't tell me that. And I'll tell you for the last Uh, I got saved, I really committed to Christ at 88. From 88 onward, all those years, I've been prophesying. I've been speaking and hearing the voice of God. I've been speaking prophetically to the people out there, to strangers at times, things that God has been speaking to me, I've been able to share with them. And it's blessed many, many, many people. Just the other day, I was, just yesterday, I was having coffee with a, with a, with a friend. And as we're having coffee, uh, I mean, here we are, uh, in this coffee shop and this guy walks in and says my name. He says, are you Hector? And I was like, yes, I am. And he says, I don't know if you remember me, but 10 years ago, 10 years ago, I took a prophetic class with you where you taught me how to hear from God. And that has changed my life. Just yesterday, a stranger approached me, remembering me, hearing my voice and says, I recognized your voice. And I remember the class I took with you, which really set me on a path uh, in the Lord to really go forward. And he said that the class really blessed his life. So don't tell me this doesn't work. Don't tell me I have stories, stories and stories and stories. I could spend hours telling you the many people that God has had me stop and speak a word into their life. And he has used that word to bless them and to bring about a breakthrough into their life. So listen, this is truth. It's Bible truth. It's gospel truth. It's the word of God. It works. And it is my aim with this broadcast, uh, with this podcast, to talk to you and to help you grow with excellence into being a prophetic portal. I'm going to leave it there for you today. So just remember to pray and ask the Lord to teach you how to hear the voice of God. Remember John 10, 27, read that verse, read it, read the whole chapter of John 10. It's a great chapter. Read it over and over and let that sink into your spirit and understand that the shepherd says you belong to him and he is speaking to you. And if you belong to him, you can hear his voice. God bless you and keep advancing in the kingdom of God. 